want is 15 minutes of your time. Now, I know it was a very long time ago, but I do remember being your age, right? And I also get that when adults talk sometimes, you know, it's quite interesting for a few minutes, um, but after five or 10, you start to tune out, you start to daydream about other things. So I'm no fool, I'm no different to everyone else. But all I ask is for 15 minutes, and that's it. And then you're done, you're gonna have a drink again, you're gonna go back. But for 15 minutes, if you can just listen and comprehend some of the stuff I'm talking to you about, and then just take away one thing. I'm not even gonna test you on any of this stuff, it doesn't even matter, this is fun. I'm doing this because A, I love it, and B, it's great for you guys. Take away one thing. What I'm gonna to discuss today is doing the basics brilliantly. Who's ever heard of that? Doing the basics brilliantly. I don't actually like the English, but because it's B and B, it's like basics brilliantly, it's almost something that might just stick in your mind, okay? So, around, oh man, it's probably 10 years ago, uh, who knows the Juventus soccer team in Italy? You know anyone who plays for them at the moment? Ronaldo. Yeah. yeah. CR7. So they come to Adelaide, they were just passing through, they were doing like a, a tour of Australia. And at the time I was heavily involved in soccer. And we went there um, as a whole bunch of coaches just to see what they did. Yeah. And you should have seen us, how excited we were to see the best at the time soccer team, Champions League winners, etc., to train. And we thought, what are they gonna do? Let's, let's see the magic. And we all had our you know, boards ready to write, etc. And then the first 30 minutes was bizarre because we were watching them all doing exactly what we were doing with the tour girls. Like what? No, it's gonna be more. It's gotta be more. So we're waiting, waiting. The more never came. It never came. They were doing the basics brilliantly. And they would have a drill where there'd be like, Five in a circle, one in the middle, and they were just keeping the ball off. And the person in the middle wasn't over straining, the person in the middle was just doing the old, just keeping everyone honest, not doing anything silly, not trying to tackle or anything. But do you think there was one missed pass the whole time? Nah. Not one first touch went over their feet, not one first touch, you know, was heavy. All they were doing was the basics brilliantly. And we were in awe because we were expecting to see some fancy type, uh, you know, drills that we'd never seen or heard of. But you know what, on the internet, you can just Google everything. You'll find everything. The answers aren't there. The answers are doing the basics brilliantly. So, in January, I was at the Australian Open. Who went this year to the Australian Open? Anyone went? There's two of us, KB. Yeah, yeah, a couple there, Alex. And I happened to watch Born a Courage train, and because I was on one of the back courts and he happened to walk past with his team, I just caught a glimpse of him and I thought, dude, the guy's not 6'2", he looks like he's sort of, you know, half but he's not, he's a big, big tall fella. And he was just walking along with a straight back, with his muscles, and he was just walking like a cyborg, you know, with his team. He hopped on the court, and he went back, and he goes onto the baseline, and he had your racket in his hand, and I haven't fed a ball yet, I've seen him do this, he's looking at the line, Moving at his feet. He's doing this. He's getting his racket up in the ready position. He was sitting there doing this stuff. No one was talking to him. He was just sitting there. You know what he was doing? He was practicing his ready position. The stuff that we teach, or if you ever came through the orange ball or green ball type, you know, um, systems that we have here, First thing we teach is always ready position. You see the kids go ready position and they do this. Well, born of courage, you know. Yeah. 10, 11 in the water, mate. Yeah, yeah. Coming through. Uh, he's sitting there doing the basics brilliantly. He walks up to the court and hands up who thinks that they're better than born of courage at the moment. So if he's good enough for born and do it, what would it be for you guys? So he goes there and he believes in that. So he starts shadow swinging. So he hasn't the ball yet. And then I saw him when he was ready. He looked over at his uh, training partner, gave him the, the nod, now you can feed, boom. And they started just boom, feeding to each other. There was no fancy, you know, magic wands going around, just the basics, absolutely brilliantly, yeah? High level, high intensity, the eyes change. Went onto court, just immersed in it. Now, 
You're looking at this thinking, well, you know, I'm talking about soccer there, and I'm talking about born and coach here. What's going to do with you? What's going to do with you? Because, I'll tell you, I try to copy that, even now, just as a social experiment. Yeah. And when I try to copy that, I can categorically tell you this, with all of my heart, is that if we break it down into certain steps, mentally, I can do what they do and what he does. And in actual fact, I believe I can do a bit better. And you know what? Two things, why back myself? Anyway, he just choked because he's thinking, this, this guy is, what was Thea drinking before he came? And I assure you, it's just, it's just water. I don't, I don't drink alcohol, right. So does anyone get any idea why I weigh myself so much mentally compared to the elite athlete? Any idea? Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's my age. I'm twice as old as him. I've seen twice as many things in my life, in my journey so far. I'm in my early 40s, going to 40. This here doesn't scare me, because I've seen a lot more. This thing scares them a lot because they haven't seen it yet. It's the unknown. Yeah? So as you get older, you start to back yourself. And I've got no problem doing all that stuff mentally. I can do it. I'll last there. I'll last there until my body breaks, whatever. But you know what happens? Have a look at that. I'm ticking myself mentally. Have a look physically though. I'm not giving myself one tick because I might last five minutes, maybe 10. Yeah. Then what? But then I just can't do those basic experiments anymore because my body broke down. Yeah. I haven't broken my leg or anything, but just physically I'll start to shake and then it's gone. Yeah. So you can't actually get there and do that because when I do that, I'll be like collapsing and it's all over. How long can you exercise that? That, I'll exercise it all day. That, it's gonna get me, because I'm not a trained athlete anymore, I don't do that anymore. And even when I was, at my peak at 21 years of age, I was probably only, in terms of professionals, I was still there. Locally, I was probably halfway, yeah? But in terms of being a pro, I wasn't even, not even close to halfway, it's at the beginning still. Yet, some of the guys that were ranked in the top 1,000 in the world were sort of there but they still had more to go. They just couldn't get there, right? So, I'm gonna ask you some questions. How do you compare to that? Where do you see your strengths? Do you look at Vaughan and Courage and say, right, physically, who's gonna give me five ticks? Yeah, anyone? Luke, you have five ticks? I'll give him five ticks. Yeah. Mentally, how many pretty, ticks? It's pretty blunt, cool, mentally. Five ticks, emotionally, yeah, technique. Yeah. However, if I compare Borna to you guys, yeah, 100%. I'm backing him every day of the week. I'm saying he's going to be all here. But how about if I compare him to Novak? Where is Tix here? Still a long way to go. Yeah. Have a look. Physically, maybe three. Mentally, whoa, maybe one. Yeah. Emotionally, against Novak, maybe two. Technique, yeah, okay. I'm just, You'll you almost get there, you're like, technique work. But have a look at where he is. So if you're comparing him to Novak, well then yeah, he's got a lot of work to do. So guess what, that's what he does. He's not comparing himself to you guys, yeah. or you know, the general public, or whoever is out there behind him. He wants that, he wants that. So now I ask you guys here, yeah. if Juventus, Born at Corrie, are prepared to do the basics brilliantly. Are you? Or do you want to bypass the step? So I don't need the basics, I'm just going to go and do something else. I'm going to try to go my own way. I'm going to try to have a little shortcut. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do the session tonight. Yeah. Because, eh, you know, standing on leg, what does it all mean? Well, if he was in here tonight, he'd be making every second count because he ain't got time to waste. Yeah. But this guy here, he ain't losing any seconds. While he's sitting there watching TV, he's stretching. Yeah. He's using his body. Yeah. You know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So before you guys tune out, I've literally got two minutes to go before we get to this. And it was uh, it was almost like an implied bind. You guys said, yeah, I'll listen to Theo for 15 minutes. So far you've been an amazing audience. Everyone's been listening, been buying into it. So I'm gonna ask you this, compare yourself to Born and Corrid here, physically, mentally, emotionally, where here 
do you need to start doing the basics brilliantly? Where do you have to go back to start working on some stuff? I just showed you an, in an instance where I said, right, baseline, am I low enough? Yep, I'll rack it up, yep, feel good. I'm at the now, I'm gonna hold it, so I drop a bit. Are you doing that stuff? Because that's the basics. You don't rock up the there and say, ah, oh, here we go, guys. You might be a bit too tall, have a look. Don't look right. Get the basics right. Physically, are you fit enough? Are you lasting the three sets? Can you do it the next day? Can you do it the day after that? And the day after that? Because that's what these professionals do, is that they do the basics brilliantly, but they can sustain it for a long period of time, and days after day after day after day, because it doesn't stop. There's no point in having the best match of your life, and then you come in another match for the next 364 days, you need to sustain it. And that's why you've got to look at these things. Your physical conditioning, you're all athletes. I'm very proud of this group. There's no one in this group that's not an athlete. Yeah. Tell, me, tell me one person that you look in and say, no, they're not an athlete. We've yeah, got a bunch of athletes here. Yeah, mentally, look how you guys focus in these sessions. No one else can do that. I'll, uh, you tell me in your classroom at school, if I was delivering this, would you have all your classmates buying in? I dare say maybe five would, and there'd definitely be another five or 10 who would just like, whatever, you know, looking at the ceiling. Because they're not like you guys. You guys are special. You guys are generally full-time athletes. You've got different mindsets. And you want more. Yeah, different mindsets, right? Emotionally here, you know, when things aren't going your way. You know, we saw that video last time about, you know, I've just missed the point. I can start doing the whole drama and the this and the that. That's okay, but how long are you gonna do it for? Five seconds, 10, 15, a minute? What, three minutes, five? Most of them go home. Or you can do it just for three seconds and then compose. Get back, control your emotions, yeah? And then again, going back to your technique, making sure that you're doing those basics spot on. Who's got any questions? Has anyone seen how the players hit the Australian Open? Are they doing anything like crazy complex or what are they doing? And they just dial in their focus, they don't miss balls. They hit yeah. forehands cross court, they, like you guys, they go to the net, they do some approaching, they hit some serves, they play some points, that's about it. And they just do it unbelievably well. Yeah. And they do it day after day, every single day right. they do it, and they get better and better. And they that's do a it, great point you made. They do it better every single day. So it's like they're, maybe they're comparing to other people or trying to get like someone else, but maybe they're comparing themselves to who they were there yesterday. It's like, okay, yesterday I was, Pretty good, but I think I can do this better. I can do this better. Yeah. Uh, and then here, check them all. Check them all. Where are you going to be improving every day? Which part of your game? Break it up. Work on things all the time. Because if you buy into this and you buy into what I talked about last week, does anyone remember that word I used last week? Yeah. 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 You got it. Stoicism. Stoic. Still an Australian student. Yeah. Yeah. I know it. Yeah, being stoic, having that stoicism in you. If you even took this much of that, and even if you took this much of this, and you keep adding, by the time you get to my age, and you've been buying into it, you have a pretty successful life. Yeah. But if you don't buy into it, and you keep saying, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, well, you become just a whatever tennis player. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So my time is up. I want to thank you guys for your attention. I hope you can just buy into a little bit of that. I know you need to be prepared to do the basics brilliantly, but are you? Yeah. That's what I'm gonna leave the question. Takes a lot are of you prepared yeah. to do it? Takes a lot of effort and concentration every Absolutely. single day to do it. I'm gonna do my little bow and I want you guys to clap. To say thank you. Go <laughs> grab a drink. Yeah, go grab a drink. And now the energy's gonna come up, all right? Yeah, so if you're nearly if you're nearly